Welcome to Friendship Christian Church, Friendship Ministries YouTube channel. Uh, we are doing our Sunday School lesson today. It comes out of Micah chapter 3. And if you will, please let us go into prayer. Father, we want to thank you for giving us this scripture. We just pray for guidance and understanding by the Holy Spirit as we go through. And Father, we pray that you bring us to the proper conclusions. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're continuing with Micah chapter 3. And Micah is talking to leaders, the leaders of Israel, the leaders of Judah, the divided kingdom. And he's going through Samaria, he's going through Jerusalem, and he's proclaiming that if they do not change, if they do not repent, that destruction is coming. And so he's proclaiming this to the leaders because as the leaders do, so the nation goes. And we find the citizens of the nation being uh, victims, being casualties of the leadership. You see, it's the innocent victims, the citizens who get punished for the leader's decisions. It's what's happening today, and that's what was happening then. The, the citizens have to do what the leaders tell them, and they have to pay the consequences of the nation. So we have to be very careful uh, who leads us. And that means that we need to pray that God sends us the leader that, that he wants us to have. You see, the people were crying out for a king, and, and they got Saul when they really needed David. So we need to be very prayerful for our nation, very prayerful for our nation, because as the leaders do, so the nation goes. The citizens are the innocent victims. So let's take a look at uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Then I said, listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of the house of Israel, should you not know justice? You who hate good and love evil, should you not know justice? Well, God is all about justice. And you say, well, no, he's not. He gives forgiveness. He gives us mercy. He gives us grace. Yes, he does. But there's justice attached to that mercy and grace. It's He does it. He dispenses it because Jesus paid the price for it on the cross. And here we're in Micah in the Old Testament. We're doing a foreshadow of the work of Jesus. And he's saying here, you rulers, should you not know justice? You're not dispensing justice. You're being unjust. You're being selfish. You're being cruel. But should you not know justice? So he's warning them, justice is coming for you. You who tear the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, you're ravishing, you're raping the people, you're misusing the people. Who eat my people's flesh, strip off their skin and break their bones to pieces. You're taxing the people to death. You're working the people to death. You're manipulating the people to death, all for your own personal gain. Who chop them up like meat for the pan, like flesh for the pot. You're consuming your greatest resource, God's people. Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time, he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. He's saying, under your leadership, you misled the people of Israel. You misled the people of Judah. And they're crying out now, saying, Lord, help us. Uh, we're, we're being oppressed by our leaders. 
We're being devoured by our leaders. Please help us. But God won't. He won't yet. Because one thing these people haven't learned is you must repent. They haven't learned that. That had been kept from them by their leaders. And by leaders, I'm talking about not just their political leaders. They're religious leaders. Their religious leaders kept them ignorant because they were in league with the political leaders. And they were all out for themselves, enriching themselves at the cost of their citizens. So the need to repent was kept from them. And they were misled by the religious leaders, by the political leaders, to become idolaters. So they were still worshiping idols, and at the same time, they're crying out to God. And God's going, this doesn't work. You must repent. And they didn't know how. This is what the Lord says. So now Micah is giving them a word directly from God to the leaders. Leaders, kings, high priests. As for the prophets who led my people astray, if one feeds them, they proclaim peace. If he does not, they prepare to wage war against them. So you got these false prophets. And these false prophets go, well, the only way things are going to get better for you is if you give to their ministry. And as long as you give to our ministry, we're going to pray for you. Uh, we're going to uh, bring you food. We're going to bring you clothing. We're going to pray for you. But uh, you're going to have to keep tithing. Keep that money coming. And if you don't, then we're going to speak out against you. So that's what the religious leaders were doing. And that's what some people who had set themselves up as prophets were doing. We have a lot of false teachers today. Send me the money. That's what they were all about. Therefore, night will come over you without visions and darkness without divination. Uh, one day, uh, there's not going to be any true prophets come your way. Micah is saying, I'm a true prophet. I'm telling you this. It's an inconvenient truth for you. But it's the truth. It's from God. These are God's words. And the prophecy will dry up. And it's interesting to note that for 400 years, from the end of the Old Testament to the birth of Christ, for 400 years, there was no word from God. Not until Christ came back. Not until the nativity, the Noel, the birth of Christ on this earth. For 400 years before that, there was no word from God. It had dried up. So Micah is saying this is going to happen. And it did. The sun will set for the prophets. And it did. And the day will go dark for them. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced because the only people during that 400-year period who were setting themselves up as prophets were all false. There was no word from God. They will cover their faces because there is no answer from God. And how many false prophets do we have out there? How many false teachers do we have out there today? Uh, more than you can count. They're all over the place. They're on the radio, they're on the TV, they're in the magazines, they're writing books. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They were everywhere during that 400 period. And we cannot, cannot allow ourselves to be taken in by these false prophets. There is no prophecy today. If, if someone claims to be a prophet, it's like they did during those 400 years. There is no prophecy today. We have the Bible. We have 
everything we need that God wants us to have. So don't be taken in by somebody saying, I'm going to, for $50, I'll send you a prayer cloth that'll, that'll answer all your prayers. It's, it's false. If you send me $50, I'll plant a seed and you'll get blessings. It's false. There, there are no, no prophets now, just like they weren't during those 400 years. And Micah is saying that day is coming. It came and it's here. But as for me, I am filled with power. He's saying, I'm, I, I have God's word. I am the true prophet. These words I'm saying to you come directly from God. With the spirit of the Lord and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression. Micah's going, I'm not doing this on my own. God sends me to you with this message of your transgression. To Israel his sin. <coughs> Hear this. You leaders of the house of Jacob, you rulers of the house of Israel. House of Israel, capital Samaria, house of Jacob, capital is Jerusalem. Who despise justice and distort all that is right. See, they were taking advantage of the poor people who had no guidance from their political leaders, who had no guidance from their religious leaders. Uh, they, the leaders were just taking and taking and taking. And these people were just being sucked in because they did not have proper guidance. So God sent uh, people like Isaiah, Amos, Hosea, Micah. He sent these people to warn the leaders about what they're doing and to give the people encouragement and inspiration to really seek God and turn away from idolatry, turn away from what the leaders were telling them to do. Who build Zion with bloodshed? Zion is another name for Jerusalem with bloodshed. Uh, it's, it's being attacked from within. God is being attacked from within in the very temple in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for a bribe. You couldn't get a fair hearing in court. Uh, you had to bribe your way out. Her priests teach for a price. Bribery. The priests uh, wouldn't pray unless you paid them. Uh, they wouldn't offer your sacrifice unless you paid them. And they, they overcharged for everything. If there was a legal fee to pay, uh, there is such a thing as a temple tax that had to be paid, but that temple tax was assessed unfairly. And her prophets tell fortunes for money. The prophets were saying, hey, you want to know what's going to happen in the future? Pay me. You want a word from God? Pay me. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. And, and these, these bribers, these thieves, they were still saying, well, we're still being blessed by God. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. They're claiming God's blessings, but they have what they have from thievery. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed like a field. A Jerusalem will be plowed like a field. And it came to pass. It came to pass. When Nebuchadnezzar came in and took him over. He actually plowed up all of the ground and sowed it with salt so nothing would grow. He took off the topsoil 
and replace the topsoil with salt so that nothing would grow. Micah's prophecy. God's word. God said, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble. The temple hill, a mound overgrown with thickets. And that's exactly what happened when Nebuchadnezzar came. So God told them, if you don't change, if you don't stop stealing from the people in my name, if you don't turn to me and ask for forgiveness, to be turned around. If you don't repent, this is what's going to happen. And it did. So be in prayer. Read the scriptures. Study. And learn from what these people did. Do not fall for false teachers. Do not fall for false prophets. Do not pay for blessings. You're just being bribed. They're stealing from you. Stick with the word of God. That's what God wants us to have. And these people were, were doing all these terrific, horribly, terrifically, horribly things. And they were still claiming that it was blessings from God. And they knew. They knew they were false teachers and prophets. They were in it to profit themselves. Pay me for this. Pay me for that. That's not the way God works. Forgiveness, mercy, grace is free. Jesus paid the price. It's free. Don't be paying somebody for something. So what Micah had to say here to the religious leaders, to the political leaders, did come to pass. And it may happen again. Uh, Jerusalem, uh, Israel, is finding itself in that same situation again. Uh, they've become very secular. So study, study Israel. Uh, uh, go ahead and, and uh, tap into the news from Israel. And you see that they are such a secular nation now. And of course, there's so much unrest. Uh, could it be? Could it be that uh, God is dealing with them in this kind of way again? We don't know, because there's no prophets around anymore. But uh, don't, don't allow yourself to be misled by people. Don't, don't buy, plant seats with money and, and buy prayer uh, napkins and cloths and rugs, what have you, that are for sale out there. Uh, some people are even selling miracle water. It's called miracle water. And it's a little pouch. It contains maybe about uh, three ounces of water. It costs you like 50 bucks. And it's supposed to help you in all your different things that you need help with. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, I hope that you've uh, gotten some insight in what, what's going on in past history and what may happen in the future out of Micah chapter 3. Uh, we are uh, the victims. Uh, the nation, the citizenry are the victims of what your religious leaders and your political leaders do. We end up paying the ultimate price. Uh, so pray for our leadership. I pray that God is in control of our leadership. And now let us uh, pray as we part. Father, we want to thank you for this word. We just pray that we can study and, and pray some more on its application for our personal lives. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, and have a blessed week.